how to create a Kubernetes service on AWS that's managed Kubernetes service, also known as Elastic Kubernetes Service or EKS, using a step-by-step -step process through a graphical user interface that's AWS console. I'm going to cover this in this video. Hi, this is Atul from team k Academy, where we help you on your journey to go from a complete beginner to a certified Kubernetes administrator, architect, developer, including deployment these on cloud. So this whole video is going to be divided into five part and, and this is part one of this five part series. So in this part, I'm going to cover the overview of this EKS, the deployment options, the installation options that comes, the documentation that we have used to create this cluster and the installation options that are available. Then in part two, I'm actually logging into the AWS console and creating an EKS master node, or we also call it as control plane. Then on part three, we'll be creating a Kubernetes client machine. On that machine, we'll install AWS CLI, EKS CTL, and kubectl, which are the client tools that we'll use to manage this Kubernetes cluster. Then in part four, we'll create the EKS worker node, or also known as a data plane, and that is where your applications like pods will run. Then in fifth and final part of the series, I'm going to delete the, uh, the entire cluster that is both master node and worker node so that you don't get charged for this uh, EKS cluster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these five parts in a playlist so that you can play them one after another. Or you can check out all the five parts on our blog that's ktonenacademy.com forward slash k8s76. And I'm going to put these links in the description of this video as well. Now this EKS or Kubernetes on AWS can be installed in two ways. You can use the graphical user interface, that's AWS console. That's what we're going to look at into this five part series. But you can also use EKCTL, which is a command line interface. Now this command line interface is easy and quick and it will take just one command and it'll, you will have cluster ready within 10 minutes or so. But that I'm going to cover in the next week videos. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that when the new video comes, you get notification for that. So with that, let's look at the first part of this five part video series. So first let's begin with what exactly is EKS. Now you have a standalone Kubernetes that you can install anywhere on a, on a Linux uh, cluster or Linux uh, multiple machines. And you use tools like kubeadm, containerd or any container runtime, kubectl and other things. Whereas in this particular uh, lab, we are deploying a managed Kubernetes on AWS cloud. Now there are two parts in Kubernetes. One is called as master node, and we also call it as control plane. And then second is a worker node or also known as data plane. Data plane or worker node is where your applications are deployed. Now what EKS helps is that when you're creating a cluster, the master node is all managed within AWS and AWS manages the master node. Upgrade, backup and restore, recovery, all those is handled within the AWS itself. Now, when you're deploying this, this is a high level flow happens. When you deploy a Kubernetes cluster, you go to provision a EKS cluster. And when you're provisioning the EKS cluster, underlying infrastructure for that EKS cluster can be either a Fargate, which is a serverless, which we'll see as I create later when we're going to create a worker node. That's when I'll explain you. Or you can have a virtual machines, which are EC2 elastic compute cloud. Now, once we have created a master node and our control plane and a data plane, then you connect to this EKS and then you deploy your applications on EKS cluster. When you're deploying the EKS, there are different type of EKS that you can have now. One is Amazon EKS. This is my, quite com common and this is the most implemented in AWS cloud. And that's what we're going to cover here in this video where the hardware is done or uh, are handled by AWS or supplied by AWS. The deployment is on cloud and it's all cloud support. And there are other things as well, which you can read. I'm not going to go deeper into here, but if you're part of our uh, class, we are going to go in the theory part, we'll be covering these on advanced, these topics. Now, Kubernetes can be installed either on a command line using a EKCTL command line, or you can use a graphical user console or graphical user interface, which is AWS console. So in this particular lab, I'm going to do it using AWS console which is GUI, and then there'll be a separate part in which I'm going to cover it using AKCTL, which is CLI command line, so you can understand both of these methods. Uh, the AKCTL is quick, it'll be become, but 
if you have never done EK uh, like uh, the console, it's always good to have one done using console and then later you can do EKCTL that we'll have a separate video for that. Now, as we look at all our guides um, or all our uh, hands-on labs, first we cover is introduction, which I've given you very high level overview introduction. Then second chapter is documentation. Again, whatever document we have used uh, or uh, in order to prepare this lab, we have used these documentations. These will be handy for you where we cover a case. These are AWS documents, how to install kubectl, how to install AWS CLI, EKCTL, and then we are going to do it on EC2. So what is EC2? How do you create them and add? And you will need some roles that are covered here. Prerequisite. Uh, so you should already have a free AWS account. Uh, now there's a, already a guide on the portal for you on how to create that free AWS account. So make sure you should already have an account. And if not, pause this and go back and create that account or go through this video and then first create an account and then come back here. Also, you should be familiar with how to create a Linux machine of type AWS image. Why we'll need it? Later, we are going to create a Kubernetes client machine. That my machine will act as my uh, will be. Uh, I'll be deploying that client machine on CL on EC2, which I'll cover that later when we go on. You will understand a bit better when I go for that. One thing you need to understand is that make sure you terminate this instance if you are not using this. Otherwise, you'll be charged because the master nodes are AWS managed, even under the free trial account, you have, you'll be charged for that. So make sure, but the charge is very minimal. I think I'll show you what, how much I've spent when I move forward. I've created and I probably used eight, nine hours in order to manage this or create this EKS e cluster. So I'll show you how much I spent when I go there, but there'll be some nominal charge, but that's very nominal. Make sure you terminate this machine or this instance after once you're done with that. Make sure you download the guide so that you're performing, you're reviewing this guide as well. So any update we do, you will have the updated version on here. You will see the additions updated. So make sure you always download the latest version from uh, wherever you're watching this video. So with that, let's begin with first log into the AWS console and begin with the EKS CTL. So I'll see you in the next video.